Assalamu alaikum. I'm Hina Usman from Beacon House Defense Campus, Lahore. I'm here as a part of Beacon House Schooling Uninterrupted Online Platform. Today, I'll explain few concepts of ecology. This lesson is primarily designed for grade 8 students. In this lesson, we will learn about ecology and their environmental factors, biotic and abiotic both, identify different habitats, populations in a habitat and community, and how organisms adapt to their environment. Let's begin with the lesson. Ecology is a Greek word consisting of two words, eco meaning home or place, and logi meaning study. In its literal meaning, ecology is the study of organisms at home. Before discussing ecology in detail, I would like to explain few terms. First one is habitat. The natural home of an organism is called its habitat. It is the place where an organism lives and reproduces. As organisms mostly live in groups, they constitute population. It is a group of organisms of the same kind living and reproducing at a given place and time. The last one is community. It consists of many populations living together in a particular habitat. For instance, if we consider a garden habitat, we can spot different populations like populations of butterflies, caterpillars, squirrels, etc. Similarly, there are populations of different plants as well. They all constitute one garden community. Now, look at one diagram. In this diagram, we can see individuals live together in populations. Different populations together make up a community. Communities together with the non-living things in their surroundings make up ecosystem. And all the ecosystems on Earth make up the biosphere. Look at these pictures. Population of penguins, population of zebras, population of seals, and population of hippos. What do you notice about all the animals that make up a population? The answer must be, all the animals are of same species in a population with different ages and gender. In each of the photos, the populations of animals are found in a specific area. Do you think the zebra in a national park and the zebra at some other place are from same population? The answer to this question should be a big no. They are not from the same population. Individuals in a population all live in a specific area and they, and they can interact and breed with each other. They are not able to interbreed if they live in different areas. In ecology, studying environmental factors is of utmost importance. Environment of any particular habitat is grouped into two factors, abiotic and biotic. Abiotic are the non-living, also called as physical factors of the environment. They are light, temperature, water, minerals, pH, and air. Whereas biotic environment is made up of the living things such as plants and animals which may affect the life of the organisms in any way. Every organism interacts with other organisms by feeding on them or being eaten by them cooperating with them or competing with them for food, mates, water, light, air or minerals. They are interdependent on one another for survival. In a nutshell, in ecology we study these interactions among organisms and between abiotic and biotic environment. The abiotic environment of a habitat affects the types of organisms which will live there. As environment can never be best suited for every organism living in it, each organism has to adapt to its environment by developing certain features or behaviors to ensure its survival. Talking about adaptations, if we consider 
desert habitat, not all the plants and animals can survive there. To survive in deserts where environment is hot and dry with limited supply of water, plants and animals have to adapt to survive in it. For instance, camels. They live in deserts because they can go without water for weeks. They store water in their stomach and have a hump to store fats. They have thick eyelashes to withstand sand storms. Considering plants surviving in it, they also have adapted to its environmental conditions. The plants have small leaves and succulent roots that are either deep or shallow to absorb maximum of water, like cactus. If I want to grow fern in desert, I can't because it doesn't possess such features as it can grow under shade with sufficient supply of water. Talking about nocturnal animals, animals which live in hot environments have to adapt to high temperatures in the day. Some desert mammals and reptiles are nocturnal in order to survive the heat of the day. They stay in the shade during the day and come out to look for food at night. Talking about the adaptation of lungfish to dry places, it's a type of air-breathing fish that survives tough conditions by becoming inactive or dormant, a state called estivation. During estivation, it burrows into mud and secretes a mucus covering itself. It has a lung with a modified swim bladder to help it breathe through drought conditions. Referring back to the diagram of hippos, I would like to pose a question regarding one of the environmental factors, that is water. What do you think would happen to the population of hippos if the river dried up? The answer is, the number of hippos in the population would decrease. They might not necessarily all die, but the numbers would decline. Few might migrate. The population would decrease because the environment cannot support hippos anymore as there is not enough water in the habitat. This is another example of adaptation. So summarizing the points, every organism has to adapt to the environmental conditions to survive in a particular habitat. You can learn about these factors in detail in chapter number 4 of International Lower Secondary Science Book 3. For your convenience, few links have also been provided to help all of you explore more about ecology. Now, coming to the assignment part, dear students of grade 8, Choose human habitat and describe how the members of our society are dependent on different factors. You have to identify both biotic and abiotic factors of a human habitat. Furthermore, you have to find out how these factors are affecting humans. Narrow down your biotic and abiotic factors linked to the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus. For instance, which are the carriers and how can they infect us? What preventive measures we should take and how can we adapt to this new situation? You are either required to make a poster using postermywall.com and share the poster in your Google Classroom or you can make a 3D model of it and make its video in which you have to explain how you made it and what are you trying to depict? And again, share your video in your Google Classroom. There is an extension task for all of you concerning today's situation. That is, research on the following statement circulating on media nowadays and present your point of view regarding this in the form of a complete report. Mother Nature is healing itself due to COVID-19. Please do mention the following points in your report. What happened in Wuhan, China and how all of this started? 
which measures were taken by China to fight and eradicate it. You have to make a document by using either Google Doc or MS Word, Microsoft Word and upload your document in your Google Classroom. I hope you would like this lesson. Thank you.